come join me for an awesome workout while we review the neuromuscular anatomy of the lower limb. For a review of the sensory distribution of nerves to the lower limb, click on the link above. So how does this all work? How do we incorporate movement with learning? We'll be doing exercises that utilize the various actions of the lower limb. We'll talk about the muscles that do the work and the nerves that make it happen. Stick around to the end of the video for a very unique quiz. You ready to do this? Let's go. Starting with the hip, flexion of the hip. Flexion of the hip is bringing the thigh forward. What better way to work these muscles than mountain climbers? So down to the floor and let's begin. Remember, it's not just me doing the exercises. You join along too. What are the muscles involved with hip flexion? Primarily iliopsoas, with some additional help from rectus femoris. Let's start with iliopsoas. Iliopsoas is composed of two muscles, the iliacus and the psoas major. Both muscles come together distally and travel deep to the inguinal ligament to attach onto the lesser trochanter of the femur. Repeat after me. Iliopsoas attaches to the lesser trochanter. The rectus femoris muscle is the only quadriceps muscle that crosses the hip joint and therefore is the only one that can assist with flexion of the hip. Proximally, the muscle attaches to the anterior inferior iliac spine. Let's say that. Repeat after me. Rectus femoris attaches to the anterior inferior iliac spine. Extension of the hip. Extension of the hip is bringing the thigh backward or bringing a flexed thigh back to neutral. A great exercise that utilizes plenty of hip extension is squats. Into position. For a little extra burn, take it in two counts with a little added butt squeeze at the top. Because after all, Extension of the hip is primarily performed by gluteus maximus with some added help from the hamstrings. Make sure you go nice and low to really feel that gluteal burn. With squats, you're also significantly working the quads via extension of the knee, but we'll get to that later. Gluteus maximus attaches proximally to the ilium and sacrum and distally to the iliotibial tract. It is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. The inferior gluteal neurovascular bundle exits the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, just inferior to the piriformis muscle. Repeat after me. Gluteus maximus, innervated by inferior gluteal nerve. Gluteus maximus, innervated by inferior gluteal nerve. Onto the hamstrings. The muscles of the posterior thigh cross the hip joint and thus also contribute to extension of the hip. These three muscles are collectively known as the hamstrings and include the long head of biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. All three of these muscles attach proximally to the ischial tuberosity and are innervated by the tibial nerve. You know your job. Repeat after me. Hamstring muscles innervated by the tibial nerve. Hamstring muscles innervated by the tibial nerve. Abduction of the hip. Abduction of the hip is moving the lower limb away from the midline of the body. Back down to the ground for side plank leg raises. What are the primary hip abductors? 
the other two glutes, which are gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. Both of these muscles attach proximally to the ilium and distally to the greater trochanter. And both are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. As the name implies, this neurovascular bundle exits the pelvis superior to the piriformis muscle. Repeat after me. Gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. Now switch legs. In addition to the glutes that are being used to raise your leg, do you also feel the burn on the opposite side of your hip? That's because another job of these muscles is to stabilize the hip when the foot is planted on the ground. During this exercise, the right muscles are helping to keep the pelvis from falling to the ground. This action is extremely important during walking as the gluteus medius and minimus help to stabilize the hip when you pick up your foot to take a step. If the superior gluteal nerve isn't working for whatever reason, the hip will drop to the opposite side when the foot is raised off the ground to take a step. This is known as Trendelenburg gait. Adduction of the hip. Adduction of the hip is moving the lower limb toward the midline of the body. Back to the ground, but this time on your back and kicking your legs in a crisscross fashion. Many muscles participate in adduction of the hip, including gracilis, adductor longus brevis and magnus, plus a few more. Rather than talk about all these muscles individually, we can group them together and describe them as the muscles of the medial compartment of the thigh. Conveniently, they are all innervated by the obturator nerve. Repeat after me. Medial thigh, obturator nerve. Medial thigh, innervated by obturator nerve. Take a few more just for good measures. Moving down to the knee. Extension of the knee. Extension of the knee is bringing the leg forward, otherwise said as straightening the knee. For this exercise, we'll be doing jump squats. The knee extensors will really be brought into action on the way up as we jump into action. What are the knee extensors? the quadriceps muscles. And what does that include? Rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius. All four heads join together distally to form the quadriceps tendon, which attaches to the patella and then ultimately to the tibial tuberosity. The quadriceps muscle is innervated by the femoral nerve. Repeat after me, knee extension, quadriceps muscle, femoral nerve. Knee extension, quadriceps muscle, femoral nerve. Flexion of the knee. Flexion of the knee is moving your leg backward otherwise said as moving your knee from a straight to a bent position. For this exercise, you kick your heels to your butt. Why don't you go ahead and place your hands back there to make sure you get the full range of motion. Knee flexion is performed by two groups of muscles, the hamstrings as well as gastrocnemius. Recall that the hamstrings include biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. How can you tell these muscles apart? 
Of the three muscles, biceps femoris is the only muscle that attaches to the lateral knee, whereas the other two muscles attach to the medial knee. Moving on to gastrocnemius. The two heads of gastrocnemius cross the knee joint and attach proximally to the lateral as well as medial condyles of the femur. Gastrocnemius is the only muscle in the posterior compartment of the leg that crosses the knee joint and thus is the only posterior leg muscle that participates in this action. When it comes to innervation of the knee flexors, thankfully all four muscles meaning the three hamstrings, as well as gastrocnemius, are innervated by the tibial nerve. Repeat after me. Knee flexion. Hamstrings and gastrocnemius. Tibial nerve. One more time. Knee flexion. Hamstrings and gastrocnemius tibial nerve. Moving down to the ankle. Ankle plantar flexion. Ankle plantar flexion is pointing the foot to the ground. For this, we will do heel raises. This movement works the posterior compartment of the leg, mainly gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, although tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus also help out. The gastrocnemius and soleus muscles join together distally to form the calcaneal or Achilles tendon, which then attaches to none other than the calcaneus. All of the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg are innervated by the tibial nerve. Repeat after me, ankle plantar flexion, posterior compartment of the leg, tibial nerve, ankle plantar flexion, posterior compartment of the leg, tibial nerve. And lastly, we have ankle dorsiflexion. Ankle dorsiflexion is bringing the foot back toward the body. We can walk on our heels to demonstrate this. Dorsiflexion is enabled by the muscles in the anterior compartment of the leg, including tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, and extensor hallucis longus. All three muscles are innervated by the deep fibular nerve. You know the drill. Ankle dorsiflexion, Deep fibular nerve. For this round, we'll be performing kicking exercises, but this time you get to tell me the actions going on at the various joints, the muscles doing the work, the nerves providing the innervation, and any relevant skeletal attachment sites. So here's our kick. I'll do it once in slow-mo so you can see what my joints are doing. Don't forget to join in with me. You don't have to kick as high as I do, but keep those legs moving. What's the action at the hip? Think about it for a second and then the answer will appear on screen. What are the muscles that perform the action? What's their distal attachment site? What's their innervation? What's the action at the knee? The muscles that do the work, their distal attachment, and their innervation.
And lastly, the action at the ankle. What is it? What are the muscles doing the work? What's their distal attachment site? And their innervation. That's it. I hope this video has helped you to knock out neuromuscular anatomy of the lower limb.